Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 8. We're in part 2 of our discovery of solutions and aqueous reactions and in this section we're going to look at molarity um, using, using it as dilution. Dilution is a solution, right? And stoichiometry, okay? Because remember we always do stoichiometry no matter what we're doing. Uh, just so that we can remember about doing the dimensional analysis because you can use it in all of these. And so we're going to look at that and we're going to look at dilution. So dilution is where, this, this is what we use in the lab all the time. We take a stock solution that we've made up that's very concentrated, very strong, like say a 16 molar. And then we take that and we take a few milliliters of it and put that in a liter and then we can make a weaker solution, a dilute solution. And when we do that, it's, it's a very simple calculation. The stock solution is going to be a lot more stable than a dilute solution is and so it works out great. If you ever work in a lab, you're probably going to do this. And so the relationship of this is that the concentration and volume times the volume of the first solution is going to be equal to the concentration and volume of the second solution. And if you're using molarity, then it's the molarity times the volume in the first solution must equal the molarity times the volume of the second solution. And again, if you recall when we were making these up, we were before we were putting um, grams into our one liter flask, this time you would be putting, they say, um, point, uh, 0.150 liters, or that's otherwise known as 150 milliliters of that um, into your, um, of your stock solution and then bringing it up to a liter and then you can do a, a, a very simple calculation and see that you have a 1.5 molar solution now. So you had 10 molar to begin with and then you ended up with um, a 1.5. Now make sure that you hear me um, that when you get done diluting this make sure that the one you end up with is less concentrated, okay, less in molarity than the one you started with. If it's not, you've done something wrong and you need to check that, okay. The other example they have here for you is that um, you, um, you put um, 10 milliliters of 0.5 molar calcium chloride and then dilute that into a total of three liters, okay, and then you're going to end up with a with a 1.50 um, solution. So when you're when you're looking at this for the first time, you you can think of it in in different ways, but just remember you can do this using grams, or you can use it with dilution using volume. So to what volume? So we're looking for the volume here. Would you dilute? a 0 0.2 liter 15 molar solution of NaOH. Okay, so these two go together. 2 liters of 15 molar sodium hydroxide. So this is the volume and you can you could name it one if you wanted to. I usually um, it just doesn't matter. So that makes this V1, right? And the molarity we want, M1, is 3. I'm getting that from the problem. So I want a 3 molar from a 15 molar. All right. I'm going to dilute 0 0.2 liters of that 15 molar. So what's my final volume going to be? And this is one of the most delightful calculations in chemistry because it is so simple. Um, M1 V1 equals M2 V2. I'm solving for V1. Okay, so V1 equals M2 V2 over M1. 
Now, if you don't want to rearrange it like that, you can go ahead and put all the numbers in and then do it. It's fine. And you and you can leave everything in molarity and liters as long as you um, are using the same units on both sides. So the one, M1 V1 and the M2 V2, you have to use those same units. So once I've done this, I just plug and play. M2 was 15 molar. And it's all sodium hydroxide, so I don't even have to put that. That's how you can tell it's a dilution problem because you're, you've got one condition of sodium hydroxide and you want to end up with another condition of sodium hydroxide. All right, and then so V2.2 liters divided by M1, which is 3 molar. And so when you do that, that's pretty, pretty simple math. That's going to be one liter right or a thousand milliliters same thing all right so just making sure you know which ones go together that's the key to these so when you read the problem make sure you're reading it as it's as it's meant to be and then i've given you a couple of practice for these so you'll be sure and um be proficient at that. The other thing we're talking about in this in this part is stoichiometry. And so, so I'll remember stoichiometry, all that means is we're using mole ratios. Um, and so because moles of moles per liter of A times liters of A gives you moles of A and moles moles of B per liter times volume um, of B is going to give you moles of B, right? So when you have, when you put them together and you are reacting something, so you're going to, you're going to have to take into account that you've got two separate solutions with two separate um, concentrations. Now, I can't really use my, my M1V1 on this, okay, because I don't know it may have some different things going on um, because when you start getting coefficients in there okay that could mess things up so the the safest way to do these is to go ahead and do them uh, with dimensional analysis and so since you've got more than one measurement how do you know what to start with okay excellent question so i have two concentrations I have a 0 0.150 molar and I have a 0 0.175 molar and then I have one measurement the 0 0.150 liters alrighty I know that's what I start with right so 0 0.150 liters and that is liters of the lead nitrate all right so that got me started right okay so I know that's not what I want, so I got to get rid of liters of lead nitrate. So how do I do that? Well, I've got a concentration over there of 0 0.175 moles per liter of lead nitrate, right? So in one liter, I have 0 0.175 moles of lead nitrate so that got rid of liters of lead nitrate it leaves me with moles of lead nitrate now I also have what a balanced chemical equation so I can look and I can see what the mole ratio is between the KCl I'm looking at and the lead nitrate I'm looking at because that is what's reacting so I know that I know moles of lead nitrate is going to go down here. Sorry, lift off the two. Um, so there's one mole of lead nitrate for every two moles of KCl. And by doing that, remember this is stoichiometry, so I'm using that balanced chemical equation to go over the mole hill from moles of lead nitrate to moles of KCl. Now, normally if I was doing this the other way in stoichiometry with mass, I'd be then looking up the formula weight. 
But wait, you don't have to because you have a piece of information over here. You have 0 0.150 moles of KCL per liter. So all I have to do is say 0 0.150 moles of KCL is one liter because it's asking me for volume. So that gets rid of moles of KCL. It's going to leave me with liters, which is what it wants it in. So all I have to do is the math now. And I'm going to get 0 0.350 liters of KCL. So the beauty of having the concentration is I know already how many moles there are in one liter of that. I can plug that in here and here, I should say, and then that takes me two liters. So I don't have to worry about grams or anything like that. Pretty cool, huh? So that's stoichiometry in solutions using molarity and such. Now notice when you get down to the four more practice, which are always going to be a little more strategic, it's then going to want you to tell them how many grams. But you can do it. I know you can. All right. So that was dilution and solution stoichiometry.